Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you guys about Red Dawn unit formations. Now Red Dawn is a movie from the 80s where the Soviets and the Cubans uh, invade the United States and a bunch of teenagers uh, form a militia and they're fighting the Soviets. Um, so I did, uh, I've done uh, two prior videos on this subject. It's, it's a fun subject so uh, I'm going to continue it just for entertainment purposes. Um, so the idea here is that we have a militia of untrained people okay um, and in the prior video okay where I talked about the L ambush I talked about how the tactics would have to be very simple uh, for because they're being executed by untrained people people have very minimal training and if the tactics become too complicated uh, they're not gonna be able to execute them uh, they're probably gonna get lost in the woods uh, there's a good chance they're going to accidentally start shooting at each other, okay? So what I want to talk about here is different types of formations, uh, not necessarily because our militia uh, would be using these, but we want to be aware of what the Soviets would be using, um, and we want to know the, the strengths and the weaknesses of those, uh, of those uh, formations and tactics that they might use, okay? So uh, over here I have the L ambush. That's the one that I recommended last time, where basically, uh, you know, we form an L Okay, uh, and the strength of this is that you know we have one side firing forward in this direction, and the other side is firing in that direction, um, and there's it minimizes the chance of our men shooting each other. Okay, so this is a relatively safe tactic. Uh, it is a tactic where basically you are stationary. You know, you pick a spot where you expect the uh, enemy to come through, and you ambush them. Um, and in the in the last video, I recommended to limit it, limit it to two minutes or one thirty round magazine. Okay, because after two minutes, um, you get you get diminishing returns. Um, the Soviets will have found positions of cover. All right, they're going to start returning fire from behind cover. And uh, what's also going to happen is they're going to start calling in air support. They're going to you know they're going to set up their mortar unit. They're going to start mortaring you. And untrained people. Okay. Um, or people have rather people have very minimal training might be really good at shooting but they're not really good at taking fire when they start taking fire uh, they start panicking and they start doing weird things that you don't expect okay so so we want to limit our our attack on the Soviets to two minutes or 130 round magazine and then pull back to a uh, a, uh, a fallback position right uh, just to regroup ourselves. Uh, make sure that we're not being fouled, and then from there, you know, continue to fall back to another uh, position. So that's our L ambush. If you guys haven't seen that video, look it up. Um, you'll get a lot more detail than what I just gave you, okay? Um, now, I want to discuss here the pincer movement, okay? Uh, so here we have, you know, in black, we have two guy, you know, two teams, one team attacking from this side, the other team attacking from that side, uh, and in here is the target, okay, and, and and this can be either side. I mean, basically, the red represents the, the team being attacked. Um, most likely, it will be Soviets, okay. Most likely, these will be the Soviets attacking us over here, okay. This is where we don't want to be, okay. This is a bad place for us to be. The Soviets who have more training will have a better chance of executing this. Um, if we try to execute this, uh, what will most likely happen is that, that the two teams are not going to arrive at the same time, okay? And what's going to happen is this team is going to arrive first. They'll have no knowledge of exactly where this team is because this team might still be back here somewhere. Uh, um, so, so what will happen is this team will, will arrive first. They'll commence the attack, and they will be great. They'll be outnumbered, okay, because they're attacking with half a team, okay? So... So this, the Soviets in here will basically knock this team out, and then this team will arrive late. They'll start getting into a fight. By that point, our team has already been eliminated on this side, so now the Soviets are going to turn their full force to this team over here and eliminate that. So um, this is why it's not a good idea if you, have, um, you know, if you have untrained people in a militia, you don't want to do pincer movements. Okay? It, it's great. On paper, um, it's great if you have professional soldiers that are trained that have communications. Um, you know, we in this in this uh, scenario, we don't have good communications. Okay, first of all, it's the '80s. Okay, we don't have cell phones. There's no cell phones in the '80s. Uh, Walkie-talkies, those interceptions can be um, uh, can be intercepted. Um, and even if we do have something more advanced, 
that can also be intercepted. Uh, and, you know, I mean, even in the modern day scenario, I mean, cell phones uh, basically are, are, are bugging devices. They can track, you know, cell phones can be tracked. So, so uh, we would basically have to get rid of any modern electronic equipment. Okay, but back in the 80s, these guys definitely don't have any cell phones. So they're not going to be able to communicate with each other. So, so, so it's, it's highly unlikely that they're both going to arrive at, at the spot that they're supposed to be at, at the time that they're supposed to be at. Um, and execute this um, the way they're supposed to. Okay, most likely, um, you know, either either one or both of these two units will get lost. Okay, uh, and then they will get outnumbered, uh, and it's just going to become a disaster. So we want to keep our team together, and we would prefer to attack in an L ambush where we bring where we allow the enemy co to come to us. Okay, and then the commander makes a decision if he wants to engage once he sees the enemy. If he doesn't, if he decides that he's outnumbered or if the situation doesn't look right, you know, he's a, he's in a position to get the entire unit out there. Okay, and you know, all the men in that in that scenario are going to be within visual range of each other, so we're able to get our entire team out of there. In this type of situation, if the commander sees something that he doesn't like, like for example, that he sees artillery or something, he's not going to be able to get information to the other side to get out of there. So. So th this is a disaster. You want to keep your unit together, um, you know, get them in together, get them out together, have a fallback position. Okay, so I want to talk about some other um, uh, formations that we are likely to see, uh, mo you know, most likely out of the Soviets, but we might also be able to make use of some of these. Um, the, you know, the first one's a line formation, okay? So basically, you know, they're attacking forward, okay? So they're attacking in that direction, okay? Uh, and basically, you know, in this in this particular case, I have four four unit, four men four men unit. They're all attacking forward. All guns are able to attack in a forward direction, um, but they, it's very difficult for them to attack to the sides because basically, you know, if they, let's say they're attacked on this side, well, only this man can really attack to this side because these three guys would be firing at the man in front of them. So a line formation is very strong attacking forward. Uh, but is very weak on the sides. Um, you know, they, they really, you know, you know, only one gun can really fire to the sides. Okay, so so that's a line formation. Um, the other formation is a single column. Okay, that's where you basically you have all your men, one right behind the other. Um, you know, especially if you're walking, through, if you're moving through the woods, this is most likely the formation that you're gonna take. I did a video where I'm actually scouting through the woods, where I show you guys, you know, how how difficult raw woods are 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 to get through. Okay, there's a lot of stuff, uh, there's a lot of obstacles, a lot of fallen trees, a lot of, lots of tree branches. Um, you know, most likely you're gonna be moving through the woods uh, in a single column, and your men are gonna be not necessarily one right behind the other, but within visual range. Okay. Um, another reason why a single formation would be used is, let's say, through a minefield or something like that, where the first guy is basically, you know, checking for any, um, you know, for mines, and then everybody's basically following right behind him in his footsteps. Uh, the weakness to this is if you are basically attacked from the front. Um, so in this case, let's say we're moving in in that direction. Okay, if you if you're attacked from the front, only the the first man has a a clear line of fire. The guys in the back more or less have to, you know. Uh, Fire through the guys in front of them in order to, to, to fire forward. Okay, so so um, you know it's dangerous firing forward. Now, a well-trained um, you know professional army, yeah, they know you know to, to, you know they're gonna immediately jump to the side, so they're not one right behind the other. But um, you know people with very little training, um, you know who start taking fire, there's a good chance that they're gonna panic and just gonna open up. You know the guy in the back is just gonna open up and he's just gonna start. You know, firing through whoever is in front of them. So, so that's one of the things to be aware with uh, with a column. Okay, that's the vulnerability. Okay, the other thing that we have is a a a, a double column or two column where your men are like side by side like that. Kind of, you know, so again, we're moving forward. Okay, it, in this type of a situation, um, you know, it's a little bit better because at least you have two guys that have a clear view ahead of them, and then the guys behind are the only ones that we need to move to the sides if they started taking fire from the front okay so so this is a two column this is typically what you will see like uh like if you look at um um you know footage from like afghanistan where they're moving down you know through a street okay you, you'll see them on you'll see this type of formation uh through the street so they'll move down the street one column on one side of the street the other column on the other side of the street so so that's the two column formation 
Um, and, um, you know, and, and the benefit is that you have, at any time you have two guys that can fire in any direction. These two guys can fire forward, these two guys can fire that way, these two guys can fire that way, and these two guys can fire back. Uh, and there's a minimal movement that you have to make in order to, um, um, you know, to open up the line. So whereas here you got to move three men, here you only got to move two men. Okay. Um, the other formation, uh, one of the most common, is the wedge formation. Okay. Now, uh, this, is, if this is the wedge formation. It's also the V formation. If you're moving forward, okay, it's a wedge. Okay. So if they're moving in that direction, going that way, that's a wedge. If they're moving backwards, right? Okay, in this direction, so you got the commander back here, and then, you know, if they're moving in this direction, um, that's, that's a V formation, okay? Um, this is very common, especially in, in open fields, uh, because it, you know, the way it's kind of staggered, you have, everybody can fire uh, forward, everybody can fire back, okay? Uh, and, and the way it's staggered, pretty much everybody can fire uh, to either right or left because this guy is kind of in between these two guys uh, There's only one angle that 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 they can't fire in. so basically this guy and this guy You know they can't fire in that direction, so they can't fire in this line Okay, this guy can't fire in this line. So the limitations are less um, But the avenues are, of attack are more so this is something that you're going to see a lot in professional armies Okay, they're going to be moving uh, either in a wedge formation forward or in a V formation, which is the same thing, you know, if they're moving downwards in this direction. Okay, so so these are the typical formations that you will see, their strengths and weaknesses. Um, so if you guys uh, have any uh, comments to make uh, about this movie that we're talking about, please post something in the comments section. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. You know, share this video if you guys like it. I'll talk to you guys next time. Hey guys, uh, real quick, I wanted to add one more unit that I forgot. Uh, it's pretty important. Uh, it's Echelon. Uh, echelon is basically a slant. Okay, so you have your, your, you know, if it's a four-man team, you've got them in a slant this way. It could also be a slant that way. Uh, which way you slant really doesn't matter, or rather, it depends on the terrain. Um, and the, you know, the strength of this is that they can fire forward and they can also fire sideways. Um, the only direction that they really can't fire in is diagonally, um, which can be a little difficult for the, you know, for the enemy to position themselves. Uh, diagonally at that exact position okay um, this would be like really useful if let's say this was a wooded area so let's say there's a road over here right that's a road so this is a wooded area here right that's all woods over here um, and you have basically two of you guys walking up the road here but then you got another two guys uh, in the woods uh, in this echelon formation uh, walking up ahead um, so that these two guys can't be seen from the road. So if these two guys were to be attacked, okay, they're in a position to jump into the woods, and now these guys are in a position to attack uh, whoever's trying to get these guys. So um, it can be very useful like that. Um, the other thing with this uh, formation, it can be very useful if you're moving, uh, let's say, through a, a swampy area, right? If you're trying to, you know, maintain a straight line. Well, if you're moving, let's say, through a, a swampy area or really rough terrain where... Like, let's say this is solid ground here, but this is all, like, swampy, you know, marshy stuff. And you know that these guys are going to end up slowing down. Well, you put these guys out ahead, right? You form this echelon here. So as, you, as you're moving forward, eventually these two guys will, you know, because they're moving slower, are going to end up lining up uh, with everybody. So that's, a, uh, that's another way that the echelon can be used if you're moving through um, terrain where, you know, one side, you know, you, you know, one side is solid and the other side is kind of marshy. Um, so uh, that's excellent for you guys. Talk to you guys soon.